Hello everybody, welcome to this amazing video, or, well, discussion of Let's Discuss Camping. Now in our last video we had discussed Decisive Strike, and there were a good amount of comments, and what it's come to pass, and I've realized is that there are a lot of points and valid discussions that you guys made that I really do need to dedicate an entire video for that. So my idea is we'll cover a couple topics, then I'll go back to the prior topics and we'll re-talk about them. Especially with all the changes that happened in the recent 1.3 patch that did change Decisive Strike a little bit. Uh, I mean, there's a lot to talk about and there was another subject that was brought up during your many conversations. So one of the big things that was brought up was if I exploit Decisive Strike, what's my thoughts on camping? And to be honest, I say, let those killers camp. Pitch those tents and get that campfire ready cause it's gonna be toasty. And before we even get far into this, I can already hear you like, oh, what? No way. And really, the truth comes out because as a survivor, I'm not that altruistic. I hate saving people. Although, it pains me to see people just, you know, get hooked, but sometimes campers exist and you can't stop them because it is a strategy for the killer to stop you from saving people, especially if that person's a key player, really good, has items that kind of screw with the killer. So his job is to waste your time, to remove your hope. So let him. If you're the survivor that is not being camped, go get a generator. Stop being lazy. I know that saving your friend is very important to you. I know that you feel altruism has to be a thing, but sometimes I say, fuck it, let them die. Sometimes it is up to them not to be downed so fast that you would have to save them in the first place. I mean, sure, it sucks that campers camp. And I I agree, it's, it's a valid strategy, but I don't like it, but I also don't like infinites, but you know, I'm okay with them because I understand survival is important and that survivor wants to get away, but camping, camping has its costs to the killer. So I say, go ahead. So on top of you probably going to get those generators now, the killer does lose quite a bit for camping. That's why it is a valid strategy. The killer's not truly rewarded by sitting there watching this guy on a hook. Killer misses out on tons of points for every moment he sits there camping. He loses points on Hunter because he's not hunting anybody, he doesn't find a new victim, he doesn't chase them, there's no points to be had. He's not gaining brutality because he's not striking anybody, he's not gaining deviousness because his tool is not in effect, and that's the big thing. It's him not getting points for camping, so punish him! Punish the shit out of these campers! They'll learn that camping does not give them points, if you play right. That's why whenever I play with surviving friends, I ask, hey, is he camping? And if the answer is yes, I tell all the three survivors, get generators. Ignore the dying victim, get generators. Then, you, if you have one friend who hung in there as long as he could and died to a camper, you should have gotten three generators at the cost of one life at the minimum. That does not include any items you could have found. You could have probably already started the next few generators. You truly gain more than you would if the camper stopped camping. It's kind of easier when the killer's a camper because getting the generators running out that door is far more worth it. With the new totems in effect in 1.3 update, I mean, you've got all the opportunities in the world to just score points. And I mean, hell, you can always stop a camper by being a badass. Now I know that by saying by being a badass doesn't help you out, so let me tell you how you stop a camper. It's pretty simple. Depending on the killer and how you approach him and his perks, which you can all tell what he's going to do by just testing the waters while you're playing, especially if you're in Survive with Friends, communicate with each other so you understand what's going on. But if you know he does not have that rapid fire attack from Save the Best for Last or Unrelenting, you can get someone off a hook by letting the killer strike you with a basic attack. During the time that he strikes you, you have a brief, and I mean brief, window of grabbing your friend off the hook because the killer will be stuck in a animation of getting the blood off his weapon. You have enough time to run, and if you have sprint burst, you have plenty of time to get the hell out of there after you've done so. Or, you know, another friend can come by and take another hit. Be careful of the hillbilly or Michael Myers even. Um, if it's the hillbilly, you don't want to get chainsawed. That's, so that's probably one of the campers you want to avoid at all costs. Again, 
go get a goddamn generator. It's so simple. Do other things. Another little nifty tip, if you bring a flashlight and blind the killer, that'll get him off you. If you can get the killer to take a few steps away from the uh, hook and maybe walk past a barricade and lock him out, which requires him to break the barricade or walk all the way around, you can always give yourself a free little boost of time if you are so altruistic. But remember that that type of altruism is your own damn fault. But now, what do you do if you're the one being camped? Well, if you're the one being camped, I'm sorry. Hang in there, kid. Um, hanging on a tree like a little kitten. That's really just what I can tell you. And the longer you hang in there, the more opportunity you give your allies. Now remember, it was universally accepted that by wiggling on the hook, you were telling randoms that you were being camped. So wiggle until you can't wiggle anymore. That does not mean hold the mouse button until you jump off the hook, no. That means just tap it slightly so your character gives a little twitch. That should inform other survivors, and if you're one of those other survivors, this is what it's supposed to inform you. The killer is camping. Go ahead and leave. And what that's going to tell your allies is that you're going to hang in there and give them the time they need to get the generators. Sometimes, if you were the first to go down, you gotta let it happen. And I'm sorry. I'm so sorry that you got caught. But get good, son. You getting caught and getting camped was your own damn fault. I'm just saying. Now, in defense of these killers that do camp, and I have camped before, excluding this video, if the killer knocks down three survivors, hooks two of them right next to each other and keeps the bloodied person at his feet, that camping is justified. He has to protect three people. He deserves all three of those kills for knocking all three of you down in the same location. Do not be a salty Sally just because you three got dunked on and the fourth person can't save you or figure it out. That's probably a big thing and something I've noticed. I, as a killer, always keep Deerstalker on me when it's available because I like to always keep track of where my fallen prey have gone. But it's huge. It's immensely important for me to prevent you from leaving if I've knocked three of you down. So just keep that in mind. You can't always blame the killer for camping. Camping is justified. Now face camping, being up there, watching, that's where things get a little scummy. But you know as a survivor, you're gonna use boards, you're gonna get use anything you can to escape. Flashlight a killer in the face when you, you know, <laughs> when you drop a board, you're gonna just wait for him to break it so you can blind him. We all know how you survivors play, and I know how you killers play. I guess the biggest thing to keep in mind and consider from all of this is, the game is as it is. Camping's a strategy. BMing the killer is technically a strategy. Everything here is a justified tactic in order to get you killed as a survivor. Just remember that. That's his job, his goal. Just like the slug meta, just like decisive strike. So what do you guys think? Do you really hate camping so much that it makes you lose your mind and you can't understand it? Like I said, I back you up that you can be salty. But please understand, it is still a strategy. Don't go reporting killers for this. And what about infinites? Do you think those are scummy too? I'm pretty sure you do. But I know you've all ran it at least once. We can't all be perfect because we all know as a survivor we do our damn best to escape and as a killer we do our damn best to kill. But in the end, no matter what strategies we go with, there's always a way around. There's always something else to be done. There's always a tactic, a strategy, a benefit, and a downfall. And the biggest downfall to camping is a loss of points. Killers should not camp because it's a loss of points. Not because it's scummy. Not because you're trying to be the white knight and being the perfect little goober that you are. No. You shouldn't camp because it doesn't benefit you as much as you think it might. Letting a survivor get away is probably a little better then, well, sitting here all day. Now, in the videos here, they were trying to be altruistic and they fed me a hell of a lot of points and I was feeding off them pretty hard even while camping because even I don't want to lose that many points. I came well equipped with perks and add-ons. But as a side note also to keep in mind, Insidious is a perk that is for camping. I mean, there's no other reason you would use Insidious 
So the developers had camping in mind. This is not an exploit, and as far as I know, the developers have agreed that it is a strategy. And I agree, it is a strategy. And finally, what should our next topic be? Don't forget, after about three topics, I'll do a response video and grab some of the best comments and discussions that I could get. Um, there were tons for the Decisive Strike video, which if you haven't seen it yet, check out my playlist for Let's Discuss. I'll keep all the videos together. Um, if you want to put your discussion there, go comment on that video. When I prepare the response video, um... I'll take from the comments section. If you're on Reddit, I do apologize. I will do my best to respond to you guys in Reddit if I can. I'll do my best to directly respond to you guys when I can, um, but the best ones will be featured in the video that's coming up. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Tell me your discussions down below. Let me know what your thoughts, how you feel. Do you camp? If you do camp, did you notice a loss in points? Are you always winning? Is it working for you? Is that strategy fun? Just let me know. Tell me your thoughts, how you guys feel about this situation. Because as a community, I already know it's looked down upon, but really, in truth, if you play it out right, if you play it smart, you have nothing to fear. As a survivor, that is. Other than if you were the one that's caught, you're dead, son. Hopefully you got enough points. Good game. Well, don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, I upload every single day. These Let's, Dis Let's Discuss videos are fun for me. I get to vent and let you know my opinion on things while also getting to hear your various opinions. And I actually get to be a part of the community, which is kind of nice. So anyways, answer those questions. Let me know what you feel in the comments down below. I'm always excited to hear from you guys. If you have a suggestion, also leave it in the same I'll read the whole- I read everything you guys type. Even if it is a wall, I read the whole damn thing. I, you know, it's kind of awesome. Um, but yeah, if you guys have a topic you'd like to discuss in the next one, like how everyone brought up this topic in the last one, I'd be more than happy to talk about it. And until next time, like, comment, subscribe. Don't forget to hit the little bell thing, you won't get alerts. Otherwise, and as always, good game.